Khan Academy divide decimals and we are working on the subtopic divide whole numbers to get a decimal two digit divisors. express your answer as a decimal. So we're working on the same thing that we did in the last topic, only this time now we're going to have a double digit number as our divisor. So 12 fits into 63. So this is sometimes a little bit harder because we might not know the multiples of whatever um, divisor that we have. So in this case we're going to still start with what we did before. 12 fits into 6, 0 times, 0 times 12 is 0 and we're going to subtract. 6 take away 0 is 6 and bring down my 3 and then 12 fits into 63. Now if you happen to be able to count by 12s or if you know your multiples of 12 then you can probably solve this without doing much math. If you're not sure then that's where I kind of come over to the side and I work and I say okay well 12 times 4 let's try that. And I just do a little bit of a guess and check method. 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4. Okay, so it's not that. So then I'm going to try 5, because that seems like it might, oops, be close. So 12 times 5. So 5 times 2 is 10. And 5 times 1 is 5, plus another one is 60. So that seems like that's the closest we're going to get. So 12 fits into 63 five times and five times 12 is 60 and then we're going to get a remainder of three and that's where in a lot of cases you would stop right there and you would just say your answer is five remainder three but because they said that they want us to get a decimal that tells us we have to keep going until we get a remainder of zero so to do that i'm just going to put my decimal here and add a zero that did not change my number at all because 63 is the same as 63.0 but then I'm also going to take that decimal and slide it straight up before I forget about it so because I added a zero here I can bring that zero down 12 fits into 30 well I know this one is 2 times because I know that 2 times 12 is 24 And then when I subtract, I borrow, make this a 10. 10 take away 4 is 6. 2 take away 2 is 0. Again, I still don't have that remainder of 0, so I have to add a 0 on and bring it down. And 12 fits into 60 five times. And then 5 times 12 is 60. And when we subtract, we would get 0, so I know that I'm done. So my final answer here is 5. 0.25. 7 divided by 25. So in this case, remember, we're going to put the 25 on the outside and see how many times does it fit into 7. And when we do 25 fits into 7 right away, we're going to get 0. 0 times 25 is 0. I'm going to subtract and get 7 and already we're stumped. So I'm going to add my decimal. I'm going to slide my decimal straight up so I don't forget about it and add a zero and move that zero down. 25 fits into 70. I can count by 25s because I think about money. I think about quarters. So 25, 50, 75. So it doesn't fit in three times because that would be 75 and I only have 70. So 25 fits into 70 twice. 2 times 25 is 50. And when I subtract, I get a 0 and I get a 2. And then I have to bring down another 0. So 25 fits into 200. So again, I like to think 25, 50, 75, 100. So it fits into 100 four times, so it would fit into 200 200 eight times. So eight times 25 is 200. And when I subtract, I get zero, so I know that I'm all done. So my decimal is or my answer is 0 decimal 28. 
600 divided by 80. So in this case, I'm going to put my 80 on the outside and 600 on the inside. Eighty fits into six zero times. Zero times eighty is zero. Subtract and I get six and bring down my zero. Eighty fits into sixty zero times. Zero times eighty is zero. Subtract and I get sixty and bring down my zero six hundred. Now for those of you that are noticing that we could have we didn't really need to write these steps out. You're exactly right. We could have just gone 80 fits into 6, 0, 80 fits into 60, 0. I just like to do the steps to keep it consistent and to keep a pattern going. So now we have to figure out 80 fits into 600 how many times. So I'm going to go over here and do some math. Okay, and I know that 80 times 10 would be 800. So I know that it can't be 10. Okay, so I'm going to just try 7. 7 times 0 is 0, and 7 times 8 is 56. So I kind of lucked out on that first guess there because I'm only 40 away, which means that it's definitely got to be that it fits in 7 times. So 80 fits into 600 7 times. 7 times 80 is 560. And then we subtract. We can borrow to make that a 5, and that becomes a 10, which then becomes a 9, and that becomes a 10. 10 take away 0. Oops, I didn't need to double borrow there. Sorry, 0 minus um, 0 is 0, and then 10 take away 6 is 40. And then we need to bring down the 0. And also remember to bring that decimal up. So now 80 fits into 400. Okay, again, I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to come over here and do 80 times 5. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 8 is 40. So it looks like I figured it out that 80 fits into 400 five times. 5 times 80 is 400. So when I subtract, I would get zero. I'm running out of room here, though. So my answer is going to be 7.5. And then last one, 50 fits into 3. And sometimes I have kids that say right away, they like to just do a decimal and add a zero right away because they know that that's going to be coming and it's just easier for them to do it at that point. That's fine, you can slide your decimal up. 50 fits into three, zero times, zero times 50 is zero. Subtract and I get three, bring down my zero. 50 fits into 30, zero times, zero times 50 is zero. Subtract and I get 30. Bring down my zero. 50 fits into 300. I can count by 50s, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, which would be six times. Six times 50 is 300. And when I subtract, I get zero, so I know that I'm done. So my decimal here is gonna be 0 0.06. And again, remember that if you ever have to add more than three zeros in fifth grade, you probably made a mistake somewhere because typically we won't make you keep going on and on like that in fifth grade.